Here's my punch. I always leave it in the apron. Don't mean to, but I'm bad at staying organized. I'll tell you. Like, yeah. This right here is my most frequently lost tool. I never, ever <laughs> can find it more than twice in a row during any sort of given project. I always lose it, and I always have to find it again, lose it, find it again, lose it, find it again. So, yeah, this is incredibly useful for various projects of sorts. Um, it allows you to make, oh, allows you to make little marks on various things and of that nature. So, yeah. So, um, what are we doing? We are, oh yeah, I set up a little clipboard thing on my bandsaw. This is my bandsaw, by the way. Ta-da, bandsaw. Um, yeah, so that's... Yeah, the clipboard there is to put little note papers on or anything like that so I can watch my measurements and what exactly I'm doing while I'm making something. Uh, but that's kind of besides the point right now, because today what I have is over here. Yep. I made this. Now this is a little thing that you can do. Um with a small little nut of sorts. What this is going to be is a T-track nut. What I already did was I removed both of the side pieces from it, like that, and like that. Boop. And how I did that was on, if you'll follow me, this lovely little bandsaw right here. Don't mind the mess. Uh, it's always there. So this is a metal cutting bandsaw with coolant. It's very lovely. Yeah, we use that for making this. Now, if you don't know what a T-track nut is, uh, it looks like a T shape of sorts, but extruded along a certain plane. Uh, specifically the plane that has the T. Anyway, it looks like a nut that has little things on the side. So what I gotta do right now is to make those things on the side of this for the purpose of the new quick change tool post we just got. Speaking of which, I still haven't showed that and I still need to. So, if you'll come along with me, don't mind the spooky ceiling hole. Alright, come on. We're going on an adventure. Mild shuffling from various purposes. Okay, this is a lathe, again. Um, and a ladder that's unfortunately placed. Okay, so here's the lathe. Very lovely. And what we've got now as of recently, is a quick change tool post. Now this lovely little device here allows you to quickly change what you have attached to it. So what you got is a tool holder. I believe this is specifically a, uh, I think a parting tool holder uh, for if you have a part on a machine and you want it to be a specific size, you can just and yeah slice it off at that specific size. And the idea there is you catch it before it goes flying in any one of the given directions that parts like to fly in. So anyway, you take that, you take this, and you make them friends. Oh, yeah. And it just drops right on. And it drop, drops right on precisely where you want it to drop on. So just like that, there you go. And then you lock it in place to hold it down and then it goes on the to on the lathe. So um, we've got this future T-track nut right here. This came as like a little square shape. I made it into a rectangle shape. So we all still have two more operations before this is operational. So yeah, this goes on the bottom of that and basically bolts it to the lathe and specifically to the tool post apron. So yeah, we gotta get around to making that. And I thought that I may be able to see if I can draw this out. What this needs to look like, oh, here's my drawing box right here. So I'm making this sort of thing like that. So that's the flat surface. It goes down like that, over like that, down like that, over like that, up like that, over like that, up, and yeah. That's, that's supposed to be a T-track. 
And so then you got your threaded part of it inside of here, and then on top of that is your tool post, which is too big for this drawing and this visual representation. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm trying to make right now. Uh, so what I thought I might be able to do is cut out those two little tracks using four cuts on a bandsaw. But I would have to be holding this by hand, and I mean, yeah, it's it's a little bit squirrely, and I don't really want to get my hands that close to a moving bandsaw blade, as you shouldn't get your hands that close to a moving bandsaw blade. Bad idea every time. What I think I'll do is I'll set up my my Dremel tool router, and I'll set that up with a grinding wheel. I'll try and sweep off those edges with the Dremel tool router, but first I need to set that up and get it all ready to go because it's not remotely in that position. So yeah, next up you'll see me doing that. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, okay. So here's the Dremel tool router. Um, never been used before, very exciting. So I'm going to, oh, let me give you a brief tour. Lower wall, bandsaw, Mobility chair, bench, drill, trim that's been on the floor forever, PVC pipe that has recently been on the floor. Very fun. And then they sent us setter punches. Maybe we'll scoop those to the side. Ah, perfect. Okay. So that's going to be attached like that, ideally. I'm wearing my steel-toed calluses. Okay. How about you get clamped? And bite. Oh. Bite. Oh. Too, too little. Not too much, not too little. That's the goal. This one's going to be a little bit more bitey. So, yeah. It's the best way to clamp onto something easily. Yeah, not just for welding and various other purposes. You can always see these, though, with little weld spots all over them. These ones are actually haven't been used too harshly or meanly. We like to respect our tools here. <laughs> kind of, I think. Mostly. I didn't hear that. Sorry. Uh, one second. Uh, this is kind of in line with the uh, kind of philosophy that when you have a hammer, everything is a nail. When you have a label maker, everything needs a label. So, we got a Dremel tool. This is a fairly good Dremel tool. Um, it's not the best quality one, but it still works pretty well for our applications. Whatever those may be. Uh, unwindy, please. Am I recording? Okay, good, I'm recording. Battery. Ooh. Okay. I wonder if I can record, I, this is a new camera, actually. You may notice from, well, aside from the fact that I haven't uploaded anything in ages, you may notice that it sounds a little bit different than a tiny little knockoff GoPro or a cell phone. 
main distinction there. So, yeah. Dremel tool sounds. Uh, what I'm looking for is probably one of these little doohickeys. Uh, yeah. Does that look like it can grind down some mystery metal? I think so. We'll see if it actually does. Um, those are more for polishing, actually, but yeah. We'll do what we can. I hope it works. If it doesn't, I'll be extra sad. Um, okay, uh, let me wheel you around. I want to show you this. Mm-hmm. We're spinning. Yep, yep, yep. Hey. Okay, so here's a little tour of our current disaster zone. Uh, yeah, he, oh, ooh. Here's the French cleat wall I built a little bit ago. Um, yeah, it's got all sorts of the room for various things and activities. Um, yeah, so just leave that like that. Uh, yeah, got the brad nailer. We've got various Dremel tool accessories. And what you can do, I learned this trick, this trick from the internet. You can just put a little bit of a French cleat wall track to it, and you got yourself a thing that can fit on a French cleat wall. Is that the end solution? No, because I don't like those type of things. I want everything to be made of wood and ideally painted and nice looking. Um, but. Yeah, it's a process to get there, and sometimes you just got to go with an easy solution just so that you can get the things that you actually want done in a state of completion. So, yeah, anyway, with that in mind, what I was coming over here for was to grab a pair of pliers. Thank you, and good night. All right, spinning back around. There's a wood pile. Yay. Okay. Are we good? I think we're good. Do you like our insulated garage door? Very lovely. Okay. Now, grab you, sir, and... Oop, 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 no. Okay, there we go. That loosens it. Get that right off of there. I was told that this would be the best pair of channel locks I would ever own. And I'm going to have to agree with that statement. It is the best pair of channel locks I've ever owned. Look, it doesn't even lock, unlock or anything when you open it. you got to physically push a button and slide it down. And then it locks in that spot. So, that's pretty cool. It's a uh, Nipex. Knipex. Yeah, Knipex. That's what it is. I'm a pronouncer. Okay. So, I believe how this works is, let me bring it in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing precisely. Hi. Okay. We good? We good. Yeah, look at that vacuum hose thing. That's a dust collection system that would be super useful right now. One project at a time, though. <laughs> so yeah, let's make a lathe that makes more dust. Yay! Okay. And this goes up into this right here, I believe. Oh, no. Do we want to... Okay, that fits. So I want to attach this part first, I believe. And then, let's tighten that down. So I don't want it to escape. Um, so the ones, the things that come with these little wrenches, they're terrible, and I always never use them. I never use them, that's what I meant to say. Yep. Because <laughs> they're awful. Now you just screw this on in here. Uh, righty. No? No? Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know if that's working. I don't trust it. Okay, here's the depth stop. That's cool. 
I need that to be approximately T-Track height. Well, actually exactly T-Track height, because if it's not, I'm going to be sad and angry. Um, I'm going to unplug this for now. Ooh, thank you, metal shaving. That got through the calluses. Uh, ooh, does that lose? Oh, wait. Okay. I can kind of see what's going on here. Maybe. Oh, that doesn't like it. That does not like that. I don't know about this, man. This is a little bit squirrely. And I don't like when things are squirrely. Yeah, that's a little bit off. I don't trust it. It's like a little bit off center, and this is really something that should be as precise as possible. I'm gonna sit on the floor. Oh yeah, there we go. Can you see me? Hi. Okay, we're good. Nice. Okay, there's like a a nut here. So maybe what I need to do get to where I can get that easily. I'm going to loosen this down as much as I can. This is a little depth stop right here. It's pretty handy for raising and oh geez. For raising and lowering things. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'd say that's just about golden. And then push this up through here. Go, go, go. Thank you, sir. Okay, that works. I don't have to twist the actual Dremel tool around in a circle like a dummy dumb. All right, that is way better. Wow. It's a little bit wobbly, which I don't like. This thing is made of plastic. So you kind of get what you pay for, really. Or you get what you're give, given as a gift, because you... Put it on your Amazon wish list. So, yeah. I can't complain though. This is cool. And I'm glad I can try it out on something finally. Okay. Does that have any wobble fill? It's not bad. Okay, let's bring this up. No, that's down. Bring it up. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Now next up, I need to measure oof, the height. That's real squirrely. Okay. Maybe I should just use a smaller one. That makes a lot more sense. Smaller grinding wheel, go. Wish I knew that before I put that in there. Seems like a colossal waste of time. I just did that. Yep, that works, that works, that works. Okay. Come on out. There you go. And this is a much smaller grinding wheel that actually matches the, uh, well, it works better for the ID of the uh, table insert of sorts, I think. Maybe. All right, grab onto you. Twist you around. Okay. There's still a little bit of wobble in there, but that can be fixed, I believe. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it can be. So. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Let's try to get some sort of measurements as far as to where this needs to be at. Let me do that right now. Always zero out your calipers. We're going to do some math. I need... Got another drawing box real quick. Oh, Michelle texted me. Okay. We will message her back. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So this right here is... Point... Three... Two... Three, I'd say. Point three two three. Now that is the actual height of what the bottom part of the T-track needs to be. Now, we could very easily just mark that 
and what I can do is I can run these calipers along the side of this, like that, and score it. It's probably the best solution to that. And actually, in that case, I don't need to do any measuring. Yay! Uh-huh. Just kind of hurt its feelings a little bit. Yep. Nope, that's not it. Okay. And last side. Okay. So let me measure. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to measure that. Can you see me? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm going to measure that and see where we're at. These batteries do not last long. <laughs> I can already see it's down pretty low. All right. Um, that would be okay. I'm gonna take a, off a little bit over. I need to take off exactly point uh, two inches or so. So let's do that. Got my safety. Squints and my safety glasses. Always have both. So you can have safety squints, but also have safety glasses. Okay, let's set our depth. Oh, I was almost there, really. Alright. Tighten down on that. I will go a little bit under just to be careful. And then I can always do a finishing pass. So. Oh, I forgot to actually measure how far in we're going. Okay, I can do that real quick. Give me any little interruption. Be taking it in about, should be about 0.2. It's about, they're about square. So we're going to be removing kind of a square shaped block of material. All right. We're going for like the uh, most precise as we can here. And I'm trying to take extra precautions to make sure that we don't overdo anything or mess up too much because you can't really go back and I only have one of these so yeah it affects things let's open up the garage door okay measure depth It's going to be a pretty rough take, not going to lie. Maybe we can, like, lessen it before we go all the way. Okay. Clamp that. Clamp this. No need to clamp that. Can you see? Okay. Alright. Uh, let's actually have you facing this way. There we go. Okay, let's face you down. Oh, that's good natural lighting, too. That'll work. So, here we go. Can you see that? I think you can. Let's just do this, actually. Down we go. Okay. Angle that up a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. All right. I am concerned. This is going to take forever. I'll go with a shallower pass. Shallower. Okay, that could work. That's got some potential. Yeah, it's already kind of going.
You know what might work better? Okay. I have a different idea. My Minecraft cyan wool cube I can use. There you go. This is not meant for that. Okay, let's lower that down. Maybe that's our problem, you know? We're trying to cut too much at once. Let's try half of that. Or we give up on this concept entirely. That is a pretty rough pass we were trying. It's easier. Do I want to spend all day doing this? I don't know. Okay. You, me. Okay. There we go. That's working now. So, we have to do some finagling to get this done. But I'm going to use a cutoff wheel instead of what I was previously using. I tried a couple different things. Um, I tried a high speed steel burr. I didn't really like how fast that went. Um, and also, it's difficult. Well, this. I didn't really like how slow it went, rather. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I've got a cutoff wheel in here. I've got a block right here. This is allows for 0.2 inches on this side and 0.2 inches of depth. And that should effectively cut this in one go. Uh, I mean, may need to adjust the cutoff wheel, but I can measure that with the micrometer. So here we go. This doesn't mess up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, the first part of it is off. That was a pain. My battery died, so that's where the skip was from. Um, but yeah, I think I'll possibly run like a finishing pass or something, just to clean it up a bit. But yeah, this is this is a massive pain. It'd be nice if we had a mill, but <sighs> those are expensive. Or you can make one, and it's just difficult. change the wheel out. Oh yeah. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. But what you can do is uh, turn your grinding wheel on low, low power, and it tighten the screw that way. Kind of like a drill. But don't do that. It's bad. <laughs> it's dangerous. Okay. Try not to kick up too much dust here. Install the block. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we don't need that. There we go. Alright. Back to what we were doing. Probably a tall order to try and cut that much up in a single pass, but we're going to go for it.
Okay. Try and break this one off. There we go. Get a little piece off. And we have ourselves a tea nut. Yeah, whatever that's called. Second one turned out a lot cleaner. I like that. Alright, let's flip it around. I'll finish up the rest with a file. show you what we did so far. Here's the T-Track nut we made ourselves. Focus. There you go. So that was a process. So it kind of fits. I tested it out just a little bit earlier. But I'm going to see if we can just like hammer it in there. This is just cast iron going into whatever type of mystery metal this is made of. Flip this around. See what I'm doing? Okay. Let's try it out. Yeah, I might need to do a bit more work on it. You may not be able to see this, but on the sides there's like little tiny things. You zoom in? No, that's just that's just blurry. That's all it is. <laughs> okay, well, there's like these tiny little grooves that aren't working too great, so we'll need to clean those up first. So we might need to do a little bit of filing on there. Maybe I can get the die grinder and try like that. Well, the likelihood that it was going to work the first time was pretty low. So, what can you do? Uh, where is it sticking still? Let's try the other way. Okay. Still on the outsides. I think those two sides are just... Um, these two sides right here. I mean, they can kind of fit in there, but it's just not... Yeah. Too small of a tolerance, and I don't want to hit it in there. Sorry about that. Okay, now I've got a cold chisel here. Don't want to hit the cast iron. Okay, let me tighten these the compound cross light up. Just I don't want it moving around while I'm hitting it. Need a smaller wrench. I have one immediately handy. There we go. That's in there. There we go. Very happy with that. Okay, let's loosen this up. Okay. Now, we may just have it. Can you see that? Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I need to get some more better lighting or so. This is not working for me. Heavy thing. Okay, we're about to have a pretty cool thing installed. 
on the sleeve. All right, so this comes off. Obviously, it's upside down. Can you see what I'm doing? All right, track thingy. There we go. Now we get this onto here. And we get this onto here. Tighten that down to wherever we need it to be tightened down to. Adjust this wherever we need to adjust it to. We move this back and then tighten this down. Okay, very nice. Uh, let's get my antique wrench to do the honors of tightening this. And, uh, I, yeah, I'm not used to wrenching right handed. There you go. Tighten that down. It's on there. Compound's still moving, but that's fine. And then guess what we drop on here? This right here. Drop that down, tighten it, and there you go. You have yourself a compound cross slide with a quick change tool post on top. And it comes with more than just that. We've also got a, this one looks like it's meant to hold a shank of a various size. Goes right there. Very nice. Very cool. Um, then we got a knurling attachment right here. Get that out and show you. Knurling attachment. Alright. Yeah, so that works pretty well. And we got a couple more tool holders. This is amazing. I'm very happy with this. And the rest of the machine needs to be painted as well and refurbished so we can make this whole thing look nice. So, yeah, I'm very, very pleased with how this turned out. It's a pretty nice uh, quick change tool post. Very good quality tools, too. These are very nice. Only slight modification to make one work. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be nice using this. So, all right. All right. Thank you guys very much for watching me set up this little tool post. Uh, this series is going to continue where I continue to refurbish and rebuild this lathe and get more parts for it and put more on money into it until we can get some money out of it. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It might just be a hobby that you spend money on. We'll see. Yeah. Thanks for watching.